You can't really describe someone without secondary sex characteristics and gender them into something. Well, I mean, you can based on primary sex characteristics if you can see their genitals. Doctors do this literally at birth all the time. Right, so this is... What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here with a new video. Today, we're going to be reacting to Ben Shapiro explains basic biology to a college student. Okay, let's give it a try. You know how to do it. Talk less right on Yesmo. Let's get into today's video. Poof. Hey, Ben. I've been hey, waiting for a long time. Um... I've kind so of have I, for this moment. Yeah, I've, well, I've kind of pondered how to ask this, but um, how does your view of transgender issues work when santi scientific anti-realism as a concept exists? You're going to have to explain that one. All right, so scientific anti-realism is the concept that when you see me, you see, you know, my skin, my hands, everything about me, but you do not see my cells, you do not see my atoms, you do not see the things that make up the things, they are just physical. So there is no really true way to prove other than by hitting me, obviously, um, that I am right here if it is only us two talking. Um, so therefore, this would apply to um, any gendering things, including intersex, um, which can have an XX or XY chromosome and have androgen or um, estrogen insensitivity. Um, so, uh, so I just need you to narrow this down. Is yeah, the argument what that I'm things trying that, that we don't understand the nature of things because we don't have microscopes, yeah. and therefore well, we can't determine sex? I, I would like to narrow it down to, um, we cannot fully identify a gender of a person right when we see them, so therefore um, I believe that it is not within my own individual liberty to gender that person. Okay, so, okay, so, you, so the, here's my problem with that particular argument. The answer is that in 99.8%, 99.9% of cases, you absolutely can gender somebody based on looking at them. Like, really. If, and if you're going to use intersex people as an example of not being able to do that, this does not obviate the biological duality of sex upon which all progeneration is based for all of human history and for all mammalian species. So intersex people do not invalidate the concept of sex as a generality. Intersex people are people who have a biological anomaly. And by the way, in most cases of intersex, those people still manifest as either a male or a female. So the, the, the idea that intersex exists does not invalidate the idea that there is a male and that there is a female, or that in, the, the, in nearly all cases, I can tell the difference between a male and a female. Again, I'm not saying, by the way, that if you can show me your chromosomal charts that you are actually not a male, when, you say that, when I say that you're a male, that I should stick with that biological objective standard. Like my, my perception of you, in other words, is subject to my correct enunciation of an objective standard. So the objective standard, here's the, here's the deal. For all of human history, there was an objective standard between male and female. It was, for, the most, for, for nearly all of human history, out of partial ignorance and partially because this is usually true, it was out of genetic, it was out of simply looking at people's genitals and assessing them based on their outward appearance. True. Right, which is still true for nearly all human beings on planet Earth at all times. Okay. What was that? You can't really describe someone without secondary sex characteristics and gender them into something. Well, I mean, you can based on primary sex characteristics if you can see their genitals. Doctors do this literally at birth all the time. Right, so this is... So, the, so, so but, but, you, but your point is correct. If somebody was, was male dressed as a female and I misgendered them and then they said, oh, look, I'm male, zip, right? Then I would say, correct. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then correct, I would say, for all of human history, you were male. Now the standard is chromosomal, right? It's the, it's the SRNY gene and all of this. There is some objective standard, in other words, by which we can determine sex. The problem I have with the transgender argument is that people are arguing that there is no objective standard, that no objective standard exists by which I can determine sex. And in fact, sex is completely subjective. I can determine my own gender based on no biology and in fact, in, in abeyance of biology. I can have every single biological characteristic of a male, and if I say I am female, then I am female. This is anti-scientific nonsense. Yes, Caitlyn Jenner had every biological characteristic of a male. There is no evidence whatsoever that Caitlyn Jenner was a female because Caitlyn Jenner was an Olympic athlete as a male with all of the chromosomes and all of the junk and all of it, right? That is it. That is a biological male. And then we are supposed to believe that Caitlyn Jenner is a female. Listen, I'm happy to call Caitlyn Jenner Caitlyn because people can legally change their name. If I were out to dinner with Caitlyn Jenner, I wouldn't go out of my way to say Caitlyn Jenner is a he because why would I want to have a bad dinner with somebody? But if I'm speaking in public with folks and I'm talking about the presence of sex, there is not a biologist worth their salt on planet Earth who would say that sex does not exist. Yeah, I agree. So if sex exists, then what are the characteristics of sex? And the problem with biological anti-realism or scientific anti-realism, as you're suggesting, is that there is no actual standard of sex, that it's completely malleable. 
It's okay. We can, uh, sorry. Do you have a quick response? I don't want to cut you off. Um, I'm not saying that sex is malleable. I'm saying there is male and female biologically. That is true. Yes. Right. But I'm saying that gender is a spectrum. I'm saying that there is at least male, female, and non-binary because right. and of I, this and, strange. And place what, I, what I'm saying people. is that there's a, there's a there's a word game that goes on when people discuss gender. Because if we are talking about certain characteristics to which we attribute to masculine or feminine, if you want to say that there's a genetic male with feminine characteristics, we're fine. That's a male with feminine characteristics. Fine. That's fine. I mean, okay. So you're a man with feminine characteristics. That's cool. Who cares? Okay, but, if it, but that doesn't make you a woman. In other words, if you are going, what we are now doing is we're playing a semantic game where we say a male with feminine characteristics is a woman. That's nonsense. Or a woman with male characteristics, masculine characteristics, is a man. That's nonsense too. And by the way, it actually ends up misgendering a lot of people who are just butch women yeah. or, fe or effeminate men. Yeah, I agree. Right? So, all of the, so in other words, by trying to separate out gender and sex completely, and then by using terms like male and female, or woman and man, that are innately connected to sex, what you are doing is deliberately, not you, what people are doing is deliberately confusing the issue such that you get idiocies like Ilhan Omar writing to the Powerlifting Association of the USA saying that a transgender woman who is a biological male should be able to compete against biological women because it is a myth that men can pick up heavier objects than women. That is not a myth, that's called science. Thank you. Okay, this is a clever discussion. And at first, the guy who was asking the question was kind of confusing me with his, with his weight at first. So when Ben was clarifying it, it's, it, Ben is very smart. Like, he's very clever and he's fully prepared. Um, I can't to understand it. And the funny part is people still don't want to accept the fact when you are born to the, I mean, yes, I work at the hospital, when you're born, they identify you by your genitals, either being having a vagina or a penis. So it's, it's both of them. We know some people have some, unless you are dressed like as a woman, whereas you are a man, people can actually get or understand that you are actually a female or a male. You understand? But at best, the things we see, your genitals are either vagina or penis, if you die, you only have two two genitals. I know some people are going to do some surgeries and stuff like that. Well, if they are to go do some autopsy on your bones, they will discover you are a male or a female. So you can't deny that fact. Irrespective of, I don't know how when they are getting some languages or some words they are using to put, to put, give their own points. Like, it's kind of like blowing my mind off. Because some of the words that he's using right there, I never knew about them before. This is my first time hearing it. And I was like, why is this guy taking me out of the main scenario we are talking about to something different that has nothing to do with the genitals we're talking about? That have nothing to do with the gender we're talking about. You're, you're taking me out of the picture. But at the end, I love how Ben did not cut him short. Ben gave him the privilege to speak his mind and say everything out. So you will have something like, oh, I have to take Ben this again. You get Ben clarified everything. And this is a very, very meaningful conversation. Let's talk more about biology. Give full details about biology and explain it in a different manner that I've never ever heard myself before. I love how they, they clarified it. For me, honestly, I love how they clarified it. Uh, I learned something from inside. I learned something from this. It's beautiful to watch such discussions and such debates and talk about what they actually feel inside. I know that the, as, he's a guy, yeah. He's a big, the guy who asked the question, he's a big person into all this tra activist, um, transgender stuff, and how they call it. He's someone who is really into it, but he's dressing his glasses, also his head, weighted did his hair and his hands. You know, he's identifying as something. But I love how Ben spoke to him, and I hope he goes back and think about it and accept the fact that what Ben is saying is the truth. So that is just what I hope for. Hope for him. Comment down below what you think about this video. So guys, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. We share this video as many as you can. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag. Like an old lady. I'm back. Wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch. Damn, I
my bed I got scales on 